the island of Mallorca and the chosen destination of two million British holidaymakers every year. But when they all arrive through the same airport, things can get a little out of hand. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And 30 odd people, we say, where'd they go? Where were you? Which queue were you in? Scotland. <laughs> we got on that plane. Don't shoot with us. She's got chicken pots. Now the water takers. Palma de Mallorca Airport. Built only four years ago at a cost of 165 million pounds. It's an architectural marvel. Just one drawback. With three miles of corridor, you've got to move fast if you want to get your plane off the ground. What's happening? Uh, British Midland are boarding at the same boarding gate as we are. Um, and if I don't get there before them, we'll lose it. A boarding gate has been assigned to two different airlines. British Midland and Air 2000. Whoever wins the gate will be first off the ground. But Air 2000 has a secret weapon. It's the Escobar family who are responsible for getting Air 2000 flights out on time. Directing operations is Ramon Escobar. Carolina Bowditch, are, some, are you there? Yes. His eyes and ears out in departures are wife Anita and daughter Caroline. You survive and you try just to cope. I think in English it's called cope, to cope with the problem. We are always running, running in the middle of the pack. Taking the back routes on her scooter, Caroline reaches the gate first. The woman from British Midland may have arrived, but that doesn't mean she's won the gate. Lesson one, make a loud noise. British Mid East Midland. Heathrow in a minute, well, she's just, just trying to find it out now. Okay. If that doesn't work, hog the phone until help arrives. British Midland wants to close our gate down now because they say that this gate is theirs, which is true, but INA uh, Operations has given them this gate we've started and they can't, they're not taking me, they're not getting me out of here. So it was really shitty on the telephone to me. Finally, backup arrives in the form of Mum. I think we're winning, we are winning. We've won. We've got them in here. East Midlands? East Midlands? Our oh, British Midlands, you'll be next. We'll hurry up. Oh, yeah. A small battle won. Air 2000 makes its slot. And as for the British Midland, it left 40 minutes later. Da, 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 da. We won. We won. We won. We won. Smarty Marty. We didn't win. He won. I won. He won. I won. But he said he won. Yo he hablado con paneles. I spoke with paneles. Yeah. I yeah. spoke with paneles. Yeah, yeah, you did. But you, you know, went up there fighting I with the paneles. I with the paneles, you know, and I told her, you know, just to, just to, put, to, to, to give the gate. That's right, did you? Exactly. Oh, there you are, then. Be there you are. Be careful what you are talking about. You be careful what you are talking about. Do not minimize, you know, my... my Your authority. My Your authority and my capabilities. wouldn't do that. No. Wouldn't do that at Talking all. Talking about business. Oh. No. Anita Escobar has worked in the airline trade for over 20 years, but nothing has quite prepared her for the challenge of Palma Airport. This looks nice. Just try working in it. These plans, apparently, what I heard, whether it's true or whether it isn't, were actually the original plans they did for Miami Airport. Miami threw it out 
and I think we had an architect walking along one day and they found them in the bin. <laughs> we thought, oh, they'll do for Palmer. <laughs> this is where we lose everybody, the duty free. The boarding gates are down here, the security's down here, but nobody actually, this is where they first stop and we just lose them. What it means is if you're sitting in duty free and your flight is called, you've got to, to get to your boarding gate, to get to your boarding gate in time, you've got to run and run and run. Nearly two million British tourists will land at Palmer Airport every year. And whether they're rich, poor, young or old, all of them will have to make that walk. But if you can make it to the other side, you'll reach the welcoming arms of the holiday reps. Every type of passenger gets their own breed of rep. Bravo, G30 over here! How are you, Betty? Are you well? Very well, thank you. Very well. Yes, I know. We shall see you in see September. See you tomorrow morning. Very good. I'll be down tomorrow morning. I'll see you on your way back. Door number four. Door number four. Coach B21. 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 Keep together. OK. And when you see some of the reps down here, I feel sorry for them. They've got plasters and bandages wrapped around the heels of the shoes. They're in agony in the airport. Lipstick or a comb through the hair, they've no idea. But you've got to be, haven't you? Don't, people don't want to come on holiday and just see someone going... They want to get into the mood, especially our lot, especially 18 to 30 all the time. Yeah, you with us lot, which one? The like, passengers are coming out legless from side to side. No way. You know, get out the way, please. Riff raff. Dawn Flint is in her first season as a rep for Virgin Sun. To me, this is the down of the job, because, I don't know, I'm, I'm much more a shorts and T-shirt sort of person. And he was all a bit sort of, hello, how are you? And, you know, that sort of thing. And I'd rather, I would much prefer it in resort when people are just chatting to you and being friendly to you and you're having a laugh with them and you're going on party night with them and they're, they're liking you, whereas now they don't know who you are, you're just, hello, you know. The crucial job for every rep is to get the clients to the coach without them getting lost. Okay, it's through uh, door eight, which is just down here. Yep. And it's on the left-hand side as you walk out the door. Okay. okay, you're gonna go through door eight, it's coach number 100. All right, thanks. But when you have a coach park the size of Europe, that's easier said than done. I don't know where everybody is, because, um, Angie, there's like five people on my coach. Yes. Look, I have nobody. I don't know where they've all gone. A hundred yards away, some rather lost souls have started to emerge out of the wrong gate. It's the perfect mismatch. Coach without passengers. Passengers without coach. 30-odd people missing. Where have they gone? There's been a... <laughs> there be Bermuda Triangle happening in the middle of the Palmer Airport. <laughs> in the end, it takes a holidaymaker to point out the mix-up. Everybody's up there with Virgin. It's all... Everybody's been told number one. We haven't got a coach yeah, now. Why has this happened? Door one? I was going mad, but I thought I'd lost the plot because I went to my um, coach 
all these like the coach numbers and where they where they are and if one of us gets it wrong and then tells all the guests that then and it's obviously that somebody has got it wrong but we don't go home in departures anita has a problem well if the, if the spots are out it's not contagious who, well who doesn't say who the captain of an Air 2000 is refusing to take a sick child. Get onto the frequency. Get onto the frequency and speak to the captain. And apparently she's got chicken pox, and it's contagious. Well, they say it's contagious. Um, and it might be a possibility of uh, off being offloaded off the aircraft. So I'm just going to sort of try and find out what's happening. The Everett family from Leeds have been offloaded. We're going to take you over to the terminal building. Who's got the chicken pox? Baby. Well, it's not suspected. It's not even confirmed. Yeah, yeah, it could be mosquito bites, couldn't it? Who said it was chicken pox? Yeah. It's 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 yeah. Well, well, it won't take us now. It won't take you. Espérate un momento que necesito una cosa de las maletas que me iba a decir el comando. Yeah, they're just going to... We'll take you over in the car and see if we can get you on something this afternoon. Right, so let's find it on the side. It's standard practice for all airlines not to carry passengers with contagious diseases. But Anita decides to argue the case with the captain. Um, that baby's not contagious. Well, according to our customer services department... But they're just taking your word, your word for it. Uh, but we've, we've put... In the past... I mean, I'm a mother myself and I know I've got children. Once the spots are up, they're not contagious. Uh, somebody in Air 2000 has said a definite no without a fitness to fly. Because they're just covering their own backs. We've been honest. We got on that plane and told stewardess she's got chicken pots. Now they won't take us. But how many people are sat on that plane that have said nothing, they've got diseases? For honesty, you get penalised as easy as that. But it's not looking good for the Everett's. Dad Craig is asked to identify his own luggage. Right, first of all, we're going to take you out of the heat and take you over Just to the, the terminal, terminal building. building. Let's go back. I will yeah. give you in a moment, right? Have you lost this case then? No, we have left it. I don't know. I'm going to take you over to the terminal building. Where's the uh, driver going? The Air 2000 leaves, minus a family of three. Yeah, Queer Street. I should have been at the bank at two o'clock. I had some papers out to sign. The Everett's still expect to fly out on a later plane, but they haven't allowed for one person the airport doctor. With the evening come more flights, and delays start to mount for all the airlines. In the office of Air 2000, Ramon has to deal with one of his pet hates, passenger complaints. This flight is, is delayed is delay just exactly one hour, one hour, 30 minutes. And uh, already, just already, we got uh, a couple of passengers asking something to eat. This is disgusting, don't you? I mean, they're winding us backwards and forwards. We're going to give you food. They're not. And now we can't even hear what they're saying. In England, never happened. I repeat what I said before. In England, you know, you got two hours delay, and you know they give you a coffee and a boom. How do you call all this a sponge, a sponge cake? You know, just in chalky or what? So, no, well, no, well, I don't know, I don't know, or just, uh, I think it's called, what's it called, a bomb. you know, it's uh, just, uh, it's, it's the typical thing, you know, just uh, in, in a container that is on a stock paper, you just make it in the... Muffin. A muffin. A muffin. They, they told us there were refreshments down there at Section B. When people walked down there to get them, they were just refused and sent back again. And I promise you, I saw, I saw the muffin, the muffin was older. Older than Charles the First. Delay, delay means food. And if you go to any airport, you will find, you know, that delay means food. 
It's, it's a stranger, it's a stranger. It's half an hour since the Everett's went to see the airport doctor. She can't fly. Yeah, they're not going to let her go. Uh, the mother's terribly upset. So when do you think... Yeah, sorry. Well, they're going to take her up to a clinic. They're going to take her up to a clinic in Palma, let the doctor have a look at her up there, but no go. The family have been grounded for at least three days. Getting home now depends on the state of Amy's spots. After the break, a fire engine goes walkabout. Well, the aircraft's not going to wait for the fire brigade, so we're going to get a coordination on what's going. And the Everett's problems just get worse. Yeah, you can't go down to the pool or not, so you just sit in the room all day. The problem with working in a holiday airport is that half your passengers still think they're on the beach. It's in there. Have a look, have a look. Have a look. Just call Alice. I've got to blow up, like, you know what I mean? I've got to blow up, you know what I mean? Apparently he found it. And he wants to check it in. Maybe he wants to hang it on his wall or something. I'm going home on Saturday and I've got a personal now. But his mum doesn't know yet. <laughs> Nothing wrong with having a laugh, unless you've got to make it through Palmer Airport and its three miles of corridor. They've changed the boarding gate from B34 to B32. And between there and here, we've lost 60 people. So um, they've given four or five announcements already, and we're still missing 60. So we go and give a little call in the duty-free shop, or the cut price shop. Anybody on the Air 2000 flight to Gatwick? Air 2000 to Gatwick? Anybody with the Air 2000, 306 to Gatwick? Anybody on the Air 2000 flight to Gatwick? Yeah. The 306? No. AMM 306? No. no, you're not that one. Bali. We're missing 12 now. Anybody on the Air 2000 306 to Gatwick? Por nombres, o no se llaman por nombres. Un momento, ¿cuántos hay en la puerta? ¿Cuántos hay en la puerta de momento? Air 2000 Gatwick, anybody on the 306 Air 2000 to Gatwick? Granita, ¿cuántos faltan en la puerta? ¿Cuántos tenemos? Perdona, ¿cuántos tenemos? Faltan cuatro. Five minutes to go, and they're still missing four. Oh, I don't know what number is, but I'm going to Copenhagen. Oh, you're not going to, oh, you're not going to Gatwick, yeah, Copenhagen, this is Gatwick. 2-1, that's yeah, it. Yeah, Copenhagen there. So, Nita, what, when, when will you start telling me about what you're going to do, have to do if they don't We're going arrive. to have to offload the bags. If they're not here within the next five minutes, we're going to have to offload bags. And that means, um, otherwise, the captain's going to lose his slot. And he's got to start calling for clearance now, because he's, he's supposed to be airborne at 58, so he's got to start calling for clearance now. These two look as if they could be coming over here. Quick, quick! Co yeah, we're correct. Dos, mas los dos españoles? We're in the wrong queue. Where were you, which queue were you in? Scotland. <laughs> but not much difference, is it? It is to us. <laughs> venga, we've got the last two. Hombre, venga! Venga, hija de mi alma. Venga. Yes, Dan. Yeah, we'll, we'll correct the them all. Oh. oh, I'm too old for this. Oh, I want to give it up. There must be easy ways to earn a living. Isn't there anybody rich who can look after me and... and, and, and ask? Well, I'll give it up tomorrow. <laughs> it's left to daughter Caroline to see them off. So sorry, we'll be standing there. Sorry. Go on, in you go. <laughs> A hotel in Santa Ponza and the perfect place for a family holiday. Unless, of course, you've been stuck in a hotel room for three days. 
in Warmer. And I could kick off. I could kick off. The tour operator may be paying the bills, but Amy's chicken pox is proving tough to budge. You can't go down to the pool or not, so you just sat in the room all day. Three days just sat waiting. Do you know really? I mean, obviously you talked to the doctor. So oh, yeah, I mean, we could go back tomorrow. And we have to go back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock for the doctor to look again. I mean, yeah. we could say no. Craig is a self-employed lorry driver and was supposed to take delivery of a new truck. Worse, they're missing an important celebration. We had to get back to Blaine's birthday. It was well, on 26th today. Birthday's when? Today. today. Till today. And only one card blown down there. So what would, she, what would you be doing celebrating at home? What would you... We just bought a bouncy castle and a big swimming pool to extend onto it, so we're going to have a big party for her. Which we've had to cancel now. OK, then. Some party, yeah. <laughs> Stuck in the hotel room. Back at the airport, Anita is missing someone else. This time, slightly more important. Caroline. The fire brigade haven't arrived yet, obviously. No, they haven't arrived yet. No fire brigade means no fuel. I'm still waiting on this fuel. How long do you think? Well, they were going to be 10 minutes before when we just asked for them. OK, we can't miss this spot. We need the fire brigade before the uh, fuel man will start putting the fuel onto the aircraft. And um, he won't put the fuel on. Sometimes they'll sort of do it on the QT, but this guy won't. And uh, if we don't start calling for our slot in maybe five minutes, then we're going to lose it. My bet is they're either on their shift change, they're having their lunch, or they're playing a game of cards, or they could be having a quick siesta. At the fire station, there's a deathly quiet. Right, well, they were having their dinner. They said that they hadn't received the fax, but they're on the way around now. A fire engine is dispatched across the tarmac, heading for the Air 2000. They say it's better to phone at this time. So I said, why? He said, because we're having our dinner. <laughs> oh, they're so sweet, you can't shout at them. You've got to be really careful on this, uh, this little bit of road here. So tell me now, the tank is there. The tank is, but we still haven't got the fire brigade. The fire engine just kept on going towards another aircraft. With a minute to go before departure, Anita heads for the handling agent's head office. Este es el avión enfrente. Es que tenemos el slot y cinco. Bomberos. Bomberos. No bombones, bomberos. Nothing. They haven't arrived yet. They've said they're as soon as possible they're on the way. In, in Europa's told me that they're already doing refueling another three flights. Right. So that means they can't refuel another one. Right. Can't refuel more than three flights at the same time. That's about it. So when, once they finish with one of them, which I don't know when, they'll come over. They won't give you any time at all. Okay. What's that? Okay. Well, the aircraft's not going to wait for the fire brigade, so we're going to get a coordination we're going. The captain has enough fuel to make the flight and decides not to risk losing his slot by taking extra fuel on board. Anita has seen off 32 flights in one day. Only one plane delayed more than an hour. 
It's a team effort with the whole family pitching in to help. But still, quite an achievement for the girl from Birkenhead. When I first started working, I used to work as a rep and um, it was never going to be permanent. You can't get much more permanent than this, 27 years later. A husband, kids, a mortgage. The secret to a family business is to stick to your own job. With my husband in the office, oh, I'd last a week, or he'd last a week. One of you have to go. Yeah, and it wouldn't be me. Well, Ramon, five years ago, had a heart attack. Um, I don't think it was a serious heart attack. Well, he was in intensive care for a week, so I suppose it must have been quite serious. But he's, he's just, he won't slow down. And he reckons, his way of thinking, his logic, that had he been smoking, he wouldn't have been stressed. So what happens after the heart attack? He starts smoking again. Okay. But that's the way he is. It's just the way Ramon is. What can I say? He's Latin. At night, Palma takes on a different character. With the cheaper flights come the younger passengers and a whole different attitude to air travel. <laughs> on hand to keep the peace for Air 2000 is Joel Bowers. Hi, gents. You're right there. Hi. Oh, just speaking to the young man from Cosmos, the rep. Um, we're getting a few complaints about the language you're using. Mm -hmm. um, so we can just calm it down, boys. Of course, you know, we're, it's a family occasion here, so yeah, we're, yeah, exactly. let's keep it cool down for the, especially for the plane. Yeah, if you don't mind, chaps, okay? That's right. Okay, man? Yeah. Thank you very much, boys. Yeah. Cheers. That's you. The lads are okay. Uh, excuse me, young fella. The beer, yeah. Stop going now, please, if you don't mind. Now, 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 please. Thanks. He wants to take beer on board, but he can't show it when he's going through like that. We're going to put it in his bag, out of everyone's way, so not a problem going back. But they'll be all right, won't they? Yeah, they're fine. They're all right. As long as they're coherent and sober, I mean, she's a problem. But boisterous, there's nothing wrong with them. It's all right. There's nothing wrong with a bit of boisterous, harmful fun. Feeling distinctly unboisterous is the Fisher family. They've lost a bag containing all their passports and tickets somewhere on the way from the coach. I've kind of find the bag. It's going. I just hope somebody's took the money and the valuables and left the rest. Have you got your tickets or that will with it? You've got your tickets. Everything's got. No. Everything. Right. right. So you, so you come with me to the coach and we're trying to find it. What number's your coach? 43 N. 43F. 43 N November. So Nick, now, I've already been there now. I couldn't see it. Oh, you've already done already? Meanwhile, an unusual figure has appeared at check in. Ramon has run out of cigarettes, and the last thing on his mind is a missing bag. In the coach park, it's not looking good for the fishers. They've searched the luggage compartment, but it looks as if the bag has been stolen. The bag's not there. So, the cab will be travelling. Because normally we need clearance from uh, immigration in Glasgow and also the confirmation of the police here letting them travel. But I know it takes time, and fortunately we don't have a lot of it. The fishers prepare to bed down for the night, but help may be at hand from a surprise quarter. Ramon has found a cigarette and is suddenly feeling very energetic. It's <laughs> cerrado, Fisher. Fisher, family Fisher por cuatro. Which two, which two are the missing ones? De acuerdo. Because there's only two passengers Venga. missing. How many tickets do you need? Six. You're supposed to put the provide ticket, my lord. I'll phone Kelly. You go ahead, I'll phone Kelly. Go and, and, and get just the six I tickets. You, in the meanwhile, you know, you can go to the one or two. Yes, I believe it's the one or two. Yeah. One or two. One or two and wait over there. The, I will provide you with a piece of paper. No one is quite sure what his plan is, but when you've worked in an airport for 30 years, <laughs> problems can disappear in mysterious ways. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. We can't touch immigration, mm -hmm. the big boss. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, you know, mm -hmm. this fellow is supposed to ring just upstairs. She doesn't understand a word he's saying, 
and nor did we. But immigration allowed the fishers to travel without passports, and they flew out that night on a later flight. After the break, it's decision time for the Everett family. And Ramon tries telling his wife what to do. Teaching his granny to suck eggs. I will have the 50% of the population just thinking, ah, oh, chauvinistic Spaniard. Palma Hospital, and it's crunch time for the Everett family. After three days in a hotel room, it's the moment to find out if they can go home. Where's Amy gone? Where's Amy gone? Daddy, where's Amy? There she is. Where's Amy gone? Venga. Draw a spider on here. Look. When did it actually start? Which which date? I'm um, She's had them probably about seven days now. Okay. Uh, in uh, in one week, normally with uh, with uh, chicken pox, within one week, it's not infectious anymore. Okay, so you've had seven days, so you should be clear completely. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, it should be okay. Yeah. so you should be able to fly. Oh. Yes. The doctor signs the certificate to fly. The Everett's can go home. I can fly, she can fly, anyway. we can all fly home. How do you feel? Bloody relieved, don't Elated. say. Yeah. Words can't express it. Going, going home. home. I don't want to stay. You stay, <laughs> we're going. She's on my passport, we can go home. One of the roles of Palma Airport is to link up with the cruise ships that ply the Med. Forget the hassle of the airport, cruise passengers can check in their bags at dockside. For Sarah Stevenson of First Choice Cruises, it's the biggest day of the week. The challenge is to, to get 850 people on board the ship so that it can leave by 11.30 this evening. It's now 8 o'clock in the morning and our first flight is going to be coming through fairly soon, in about an hour or so. We've got 19 flights today and about 750 people coming through the airport, another 100 arriving to the port. We've got to make sure that all the flights tally together, all the amount of passengers, the suitcases are in the right places, the right amount of coaches have been ordered, and get everybody here before 11.30 so that the captain can get out on time. But when you have 850 guests to welcome aboard, life has a way of springing surprises. At Palmer Airport, Anita is having a frustrating time with the locals. The authorities have decided to do a spot of building work on one of the busiest Saturdays of the year. And they're holding up Anita's passengers. Air 2000, 287 to Gatwick, anybody? Anybody on the Air 2000, 287? Can I have you with me? Anybody else on the Air 2000, 287 to Gatwick? George, just follow me. Yeah. Just... 
you know what we were doing last week? They're putting these big beams across and they're retaining all the passengers. Where are they doing that? At the other end of the bridge. And they're letting them come in in, in groups of about 150. With only five minutes to go before the plane slot, Anita decides enough is enough. Sí, yo lo sé, y ahí he hablado con... Y ahí he hablado con ahí, sí, sí, sí. Pues mira, todos los aviones no vamos a, no vamos a tener los puertas libres, ¿eh? nunca, jamás. No, el avión nuestro tiene que estar en cinco minutos en el aire. Anybody on the Air 2000 287 to Gatwick? When Anita has a plane to dispatch, it's best to stay out of the way. As if by magic, the barriers are lifted. I was annoyed with them because they don't see the whole picture. And they, they said they're told to stop the passengers and that's just what they do. They don't realise that the passengers are panicking, I'm panicking, everybody's panicking because they're going to miss their flight. A frustrating morning and perhaps not the best time for your husband to call. Escucha, me falta limpieza en el Oscar Alpha. Sí. Otra cosa, me parece que también te han reclamado combustible y no sé qué cosas más. Sí, 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 pero estamos haciendo todo. El piloto me lo han dicho. Estaba todavía cargando combustible y estamos poniendo pasajeros. Sí, yo, Ramón, estoy consciente, lo sé. Estás enseñando a la abuela a chupar los huevos. Vale. Teaching his granny to suck eggs. That's what he's doing, teaching me to suck eggs. Men. If a man or a man or a man is telling the orders or telling information, is the typical antagonism between males and females. That is natural. That happened since uh, the Stone Ages. He basically thinks that we're not doing anything. <laughs> so he has to keep us all under control. Make sure we're doing what he wants us to do. Do you think sometimes he takes pleasure about ordering his wife around on the uh, walkie-talkie? He tries to. I switch him off. Yeah, I will complain about my wife. I will say just my wife is so stupid, and you will say, but mine, you know, is uh, a seagull or whatever, you know? But, you know, yes, in front of television, I will have the 50% of the population just thinking, ah, oh, chauvinistic Spaniard, right? And the other thing, 50%, you're, oh, this is Spanish, you know, you know how they are. They still, you know, just with a, with a brain, just like a peanut. After 20 years working in Spain, I'm still not used to them. And I'm married to one of them. <laughs> I like it really. Down in arrivals, Sarah Stevenson has hit a snag with one of the cruise flights. Right. There's a flight that should have actually left Palma here um, at 12.40 lunchtime. It's got to go all the way to Glasgow and come back again. It was due to come back here at seven o'clock this evening. It's now probably, it still hasn't left. Um, we thought it was leaving at 20 past five. It still hasn't left. And it doesn't look like it's gonna get in any way before midnight, so. At the cruise ship, Sarah's colleagues have got a bit of persuading to do. Jackie to Grant, come in please. Come in, Jackie. Grant, I've just arrived in reception. Can you take us up to see the captain? Yeah, I'm here now, thank you. Okay, well, we've been on to... We've been on to Ops Control and there's not very many alternatives, so we want to try and negotiate with him to hold the ship. Right, OK. Good. We've got a bit of a situation, Captain. Yes, we need to please. go over yes. it with you. Yes. We've got our 32 passengers yes. who are arriving from Glasgow and the flight's been delayed. Now, at the moment, it's estimated they're going to arrive into Palmer at midnight, which we're going to try and hurry them through the airport. It means they're not going to get to the ship until at least quarter past one, which means a 1.30 something. Uh, dear. Yes. So oh. if we leave at 1.30, If we you, leave at 1.30, what time we arrive we in Malta? Uh, pilot I station think. half past one. That's right. alongside two o'clock. Right. Pilot I, station half past one, alongside two o'clock. Alongside two o'clock. If we sail one o'clock, we'll be at a pilot station, one o'clock and alongside half past one. Is that sure, sure, sure with the seas and everything? I check the weather report, it's mm -hmm. about three, four. Three, four and about That four. means we make a good speed. 
Come so we're looking at delaying our arrival time into Malta by it at least one nice hour at the moment. It would be very nice to sail at one o'clock, latest half past one. Right. With excursions booked in Malta for the other cruise passengers, the ship cannot wait any longer. At the airport, Sarah is given the deadline. Right. We're, we're OK for a 1.30 sailing, but after that, it's going to get very tight indeed. OK, well, I've just heard from Spanair that at the moment um, the flight is actually estimating 12, 12.15. 12 right, OK, can you keep us posted? OK, what's happened now? Um, the captain's made his calculations and basically if the flight arrives here by midnight, um, with the ship has to be out of Palma by 1.30. If the plane, leave, uh, the plane arrives here at midnight 30, it's going to have a severe impact on Malta and we really have to think whether we're actually going to um, get these passengers on board the ship or not. With nothing going wrong, midnight, midnight 15. So <laughs> I've now got to go and make another phone call to the UK and um, we're going to, going to have to make some serious decisions, I think, now. So this way. The last flight of the evening for Air 2000. Anita can at last leave for home. Time, perhaps, for someone else to mend a few fences. Anita runs everywhere and everything. Completely all the business. For that reason, she is the boss. She is completely the boss, as she's supposed to be. You are not the boss. I am not the boss. I know exactly my position, situation, and status inside the company, inside the house, and inside <laughs> the environmental area. <laughs> Ven. ¿Y a dónde vamos ahora? A casa. ¿A casa? No, I see, a casa. Do you fancy dinner? Well, with candlelight? Hey? Candlelight with our children? <laughs> and, and all the neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> Treat me well because I am the, all, your only husband. And I pay. <laughs> it's just after midnight, and Captain Christopher Reedes is making preparations to sail. Well, you the next one, Yes. At the airport, tensions rising. Spanair's flight from Glasgow still hasn't arrived. Just, just do what you can at the moment. The important thing is that they get those ladies yeah. on their, on their where's cases. The, where's the coach down there? The coach is parked right down at the end in the normal car park. This is number 75B. 75, on the right or the left? I don't know. Right. Can you go and have a look down there yeah. while we're waiting? Right. I'm going to go through to the police control, I think, see if we can catch them as they come in. I've got an hour to get the people from the point the plane lands um, all the way through with their luggage and down on the coach, out through the bus bay and all the way along that chaotic front road before half past one and get them on board by before half past one. The pilot boat has been ordered for half past one. So where's the plane? Oh, that's Jackie. Hello. Yes. <laughs> um, we think it's landed. <laughs> Spanair seem to think it's down, but the screens don't. Right, you think it's down? Right, so we believe it's on the runway. But a plane on the runway is not the same as your passengers arriving. Okay, Landed. plane's down. Can you tell the captain that it's down, we reckon, one hour, ten minutes, and they should be here? That it's on the runway. Uh, yes, um, it normally takes one hour from the point of an arrival of an aircraft by the time the luggage has come through, by the time you get everybody on the coaches and in the right direction, it's normally an hour. I've got 40 minutes to get them down to the port. Then at 12.50, something stirs. I can see my bus. <laughs> I can see my people. <laughs> um, 
Hopefully, all 32 of my guests will actually be on that bus now. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, anybody joining First Choice Cruises, as soon as you have your suitcase, because can you make your way out of exit B, where we'll be ready to direct you to the coach? McLean. Hello, what's yeah, the name McLean. then, please? McLean. McLean and Smith. If yeah. you'd just like to see Rose, she's on her way down out the door there. She's got your cabin envelopes with you. 20 minutes we've got to wait. We'll do it. 20 minutes, don't let them leave for another 20 minutes. Would you two like to come with me? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> The coach sets off with everyone on board, but the drama's not over yet. At the port, a taxi driver is warning of big delays on the coastal roads. Time for a final call to Sarah. A taxi's just arrived at the dockside and it's taken him 25 minutes to go along the paseo. Can you? Can you make certain that the coach takes the Via Centura? OK. Bye. Um, un taxi que se ha bajado por, la, por el paseo marítimo ahora ha tardado 25 minutos llegar. Por favor, que, que vamos por la vía. Now it's all down to the driver and the patience of the Bolero captain. Back at the airport, there's one final farewell of the night. It's a big wolf. Can I have another kiss? Draw. Oh. See you soon. I'll see you without your spots next time. Draw. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Right, see you soon. Draw. Nice luck. I'll see you soon. All right then. Thanks a lot. Look after yourselves. Enjoy your bouncy castle. <laughs> yeah. It's 1.25 and the Bolero captain is preparing to sail. Palma Pilots, Palma Pilots, Bolero coin, Palma Pilots. You read me, over. The coach, meanwhile, is only minutes from the port. The time is now 1.29 and I've been told the ship's going at 1.30 so we're just going to see what happens when we come around the corner. I've got butterflies in my tummy. <laughs> It's gone 1.30, but Captain Christopher Rides has decided to wait.